Okay, there has been so much insane print-on-demand AI news that we have to talk about. You can now get access to Dali 3's image generator without ChatGPT for free. Amazon has released their own AI image generator, which can do some crazy things. Oh, and there has been a major new copyright lawsuit filed against Midjourney and Stable Diffusion that could change AI art forever. Seriously, there has been so much insane print-on-demand AI news. And if you have missed these stories, don't worry because I have rounded up all of the big ones so that you don't have to. So then, let's now take a look at a new way to get access to DALI 3 for free. Yes, this is super cool for people that are looking to get DALI 3's AI image generator for free. Microsoft has just added DALI to their free app, Microsoft Paint, which you can get on both PC and Mac computers. They had sort of already rolled this out, but you had to be both a Windows Insider and you had to join a waitlist to get access to it, but now it's available publicly which is pretty cool because it's now a new way to be able to access DALI 3 without having to pay $20 a month for ChatGPT+, Plus, which even if you wanted to, you can't because as of me editing this video, they've still temporarily suspended signups. It's also great because it's another way to access it without having to use Bing Chat since, well, a lot of people have not had a good experience with Bing. I'd love to show you how this new version of DALI works, but sadly I can't because it hasn't yet been rolled out around the world and is instead currently only available in the USA, Australia, United Kingdom, Canada, Germany, France and Italy. And so instead, if you'd like to check out how this works, I have a link to this video here which showcases it in the description. You can see that it's very simple. You just type in what you want DALI to make and you choose the style of the image that you want it to be in and then it makes three images for you. Currently, you get 50 free image generation credits that refresh each day, and honestly, I think that that's a pretty big bargain because I love DALI so much that I'm paying money for it, which is why it's one of the AI tools that I recommend inside of my print-on-demand ebook, The Six Steps That Six Figure Online Stores Follow to Make Over $10,000 a Month. You'll find a link to download my free ebook if you'd like to get a copy in the video description below. So then, let's now take a look at a very different AI image generator, Amazon's new Titan. And trust me, this can do some crazy stuff. So yes, apparently, not wanting to get left behind, Amazon just released the preview version of their own AI image generator, Titan. As I said, this AI image generator is very unique because it is specialized to be able to create very consistent results with text prompts. They showcased it in action with this video. So they got Titan to make them a cabin on a snowy mountain and then they asked Titan to replace the cabin with a train, which it did near perfectly. And then they asked Titan to replace the background with trees and boom, it did it. And to see why that is so powerful, we just had to hop on over to ChatGPT and DALI. If we come on over to DALI and we ask it to generate a cabin for us on a snowy mountain, and then we ask it to replace the house with a red train, it completely redraws the picture. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, I love DALI. The pictures it makes are stunning, but this is nowhere near as good at making specific edits. Now, I'm quite lucky because I actually have access to the Titan Image Generator preview. I'm still playing around with it to learn it, but something I'm pretty impressed with is its ability to create variations with reference images. So take, for example, this picture here. If I come to Titan and I upload this picture as a reference image, and then I ask Titan to generate a dog for me, the pictures it generates look very similar in style and aesthetic to my reference image, which is pretty cool because again, if we hop on over back into ChatGPT and DALI and do the same thing, upload this picture, ask DALI to use it as a reference, and then ask it to draw a dog that is sitting, it doesn't copy it anywhere near as accurately as the Titan image generator does. Now, unfortunately, this app is currently not aimed at individuals, it's aimed at businesses, which is why to access it, you need to be an Amazon Web Service user, which usually you would only be if you are a business that needs its web services. However, who knows, maybe if this is super successful, they will open it up to everyone. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it. And now onto something absolutely insane. You can create stunning, super cool product mock-up photo videos 
using Runway AI. So if you have never heard of Runway AI, they are an AI research company that has a bunch of tools that let you generate images, audio, and most importantly, videos. They recently released their Gen 2 update to their generative video tool. You can take any photo and upload it to Runway and it will turn it into a video. And honestly, this blew my mind. All you've got to do is come to Runway and open up the Gen 2 image to video tool and then you just upload any image that you want to animate and then you click to generate it. And then that's it. In less than one minute, it will turn any image that you have into a four second video. And here it is. The dog is now animated and it moves around. It is just insane that AI can do this now and do it so quickly too. You can also change how your video will look like. One way is by changing the video intensity. By default, it's on intensity five, but you can set it down to one and you can dial it up all the way to 10. And this will drastically change the video. So for example, this is what intensity one for that photo looks like. It's very different from the standard intensity five that I made before. And you can also change the angle that your video will move in as well. You just come to camera motion and now you can play around with the dials, changing all sorts of things like making the camera pan, making it zoom in and out, and you can see what the changes will look like in the preview box. So for example, I went and set this photo to zoom in and so now that's what the video here it created does. And you can even tell Runway what you want it to do when it's animating it. So to do that, upload the image that you want and then click on image plus description and then you just type in a description of what the animation should do. And so this time I asked it to make the dog look upwards and then I selected to turn it into a video. And so this time, as you can see, it created a video with the dog turning its head up to look above. But there is one tool in here that I am most excited about for creating some super cool artistic looking product video mock-up photos. And that is the motion brush tool, which lets you turn specific sections of a photo into a video while keeping the rest of the photo as is. So take this t-shirt mock-up photo here that you can download from Placeit. I went and uploaded it to Runway and then I selected the motion brush tool and then I used it to paint in the background that I wanted to be animated and then I chose the direction that I wanted it to move in and then I saved and submitted it. And in less than a minute, Runway had turned it into a video photo mock-up with the sky moving in the background, which makes it look really cool and helps to grab the attention of a customer scrolling by by having it visually pop out. Now, on to our next piece of news, which is a major lawsuit, which could change things forever. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, me. Yes, due to shady YouTube sponsors, I'm choosing to sponsor my own video today to let you know that if you would like to start a new Etsy print on demand store or a Shopify print on demand store, then you should be sure to check out my video course, The Ecom Clubhouse, where I show you how I take free pictures and AI art and then sell it for a profit onto products with Etsy and Shopify. To see if my course is right for you, I'll have a link to it in the video description below. But for now, back to the news. And let's now discuss the major new copyright lawsuit that's been brought against Midjourney and Stable Diffusion that could change things forever. Yes, it's happened again. Midjourney, Stable Diffusion and DeviantArt have had a new class action lawsuit brought against them by a group of artists. And this time it's much bigger. And to understand why this lawsuit is so much bigger, you have to understand the lawsuit that came before it. So back in January, a group of artists sued Midjourney along with Stable Diffusion and DeviantArt for infringing on their copyrights by using their art as training images. However, in October, their lawsuit was mostly dismissed by a judge for not being substantive enough. He said that they could refile their lawsuit, and if they did, they would need to add substance to it by clarifying two things. One, they'd have to clarify how each AI art generator was actually storing and using their images while generating new ones, which the lawsuit said that they were, but which Stable Diffusion denied was actually happening. As proof, Stable Diffusion pointed out that their program is open source and that none of these images are included in it. And secondly, the judge said that they would need to show that each AI art generator had made images that by themselves would be considered copyright infringement which the judge clarified meant that they had generated images which would be considered good enough to be considered fakes. He gave the artist 30 days 
to refile the lawsuit, and they did. They refiled it, they addressed the points the judge made, and they also added additional artists into it. Now, before I carry on, I have to of course clarify that I am not a lawyer. I'm just a layperson. And as a layperson, I read over this 96 page lawsuit. It's complicated, but interesting. And here's what I took away from it. Firstly, from what I understood, the lawsuit clarified that rather than storing actual copies of the images themselves, that they instead store the mathematical data points that would be required to recreate the images using the diffusion method, and that this is essentially equivalent. And to back that up, they showed research studies like this one where researchers use text prompts to get them to recreate perfect copies of images that they were trained on. So this raises an interesting question, doesn't it? Is storing the data on how to recreate an image the equivalent to storing the actual image itself? What do you think? The judge had also explicitly said that to have any chance of their lawsuit being able to proceed against them, that they would need to provide actual images that the art generators made that could be considered to be deep fakes of the original. So the lawsuit did add in such images made by Stable Diffusion, but they included none made by Midjourney. So for that reason alone, I'm not really sure how the lawsuit filed against Midjourney is going to be able to proceed and not be dismissed. But they did provide some made by Stable Diffusion that they believe met the standard, including images where the artist's signature were partially reproduced, which means at the very least, the lawsuit against Stable Diffusion has a higher chance of being allowed to proceed. So the question is, do you think that these images here could be considered fakes? It's a controversial question, so who do you think should win? Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, or the artist? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.